Okay, in this lesson we're not going to be adding any new functionality to our PaintPot app. Instead we're going to rewrite some of the code, but the behavior of the app will be the same. Uh, this is what's known as refactoring, where you change your code without really changing the functionality or behavior of the app. Programmers do this all the time to make the code better organized, to make it easier to maintain, easier to understand. Let's take a look at our code for this app. So notice that this statement here, or this block, occurs three times. Once there, once there, and once there. And that's what's known as redundancy. And it's not a good thing. For example, suppose I want to change the way we display the dot size as follows. I want it to be dot size colon and then whatever the dot size is. I can't just change it there. I have to change it everywhere. I'd have to change it there. I'd have to change it there. If I forget to change it in any one place, I've introduced a bug into my app. So we want to remedy that. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a procedure. A procedure is a named body of code that encapsulates an algorithm that can be called by name whenever you want to execute or run that algorithm. You've been using procedures since the beginning of the course. So for example, calling the canvas dot draw circle to draw a circle on the canvas is calling a procedure. These purple blocks, draw circle, draw line, clear the canvas, these are all examples of procedures. These are all what are known as built-in procedures. But we can define our own procedures. And what we're going to do then is we're going to define a procedure to display the dot size. I'm giving it a descriptive name so I know what it does, the purpose of the procedure. Then I'm going to take one of these blocks here and make that the body of the procedure. And then whenever I want to display the dot size, I'm going to call this procedure using a procedure call block. So this was the procedure definition block, but look, now that I've defined that procedure, I have a block that I can use to call it. So I'm going to put this wherever I have this redundant code. So I'm going to put it there, and I'm going to get rid of this block. I'm going to call dot size there, and then finally over here as well. Okay? So by defining this procedure and using it to encapsulate task of displaying the dot size, I've made my program much easier to maintain and change and debug. So for example, if I want to change the way dot size is displayed to use a colon there instead of a equal sign, I can just change it in that one place and it's going to be fixed for the whole app, for the whole program. Okay, so this is an example of using a procedure, refactoring our code in this way to not change the behavior of the app, but to get it to be better designed, easier to maintain, easier to understand. One other thing I want to show you is that we can also add comments to our code. And this is something programmers do all the time to help document their code. So for example, if I right click on display dot size, you notice that the menu includes an add comment option. And when I select it, it adds this little question mark widget to the block. If I now click on that, I can type in a comment. Okay, and my comment it should just describe the purpose of this procedure. So it displays the current value of the dot size in the format dot size colon five, let's say. And that's my comment. Now I can close that up and it's not cluttering up my workspace, but whenever I want to see, well, what's the purpose of this procedure? What's this procedure doing? I can look it up by clicking on that little icon. So these are two important programming practices. Refactoring your code to make it better structured to make it better designed and commenting your code and also another important feature of this is using a procedure to encapsulate code that would otherwise be done in several different places in the app okay